Every time we release a ferret into the wild, we celebrate what we have accomplished together in bringing back a species from the brink of extinction. At one time, it was the rarest mammal in North America. Here in Northern Colorado, as well as in other prairie lands and zoos across North America, we are a part of a remarkable story of rediscovery, recovery, and reintroduction to welcome a native species back home. The black-footed ferret was once numerous across the Great Plains, but by the mid part of the 20th century, we thought it might be extinct. A last population was found in northwestern Wyoming. Disease hit that area and we had to take the animals into captivity to protect the species. At that point in time, we didn't know whether we'd ever be able to reintroduce them into the wild, but we were able to successfully capture breed them. And now they occur in eight states, Mexico and Canada at 30 different sites. I uh, examined the first three or four black-footed ferrets uh, that, that they found dead. I was just shocked because I grew up in Wyoming. I knew, I heard, that black-footed ferrets were, were all gone, and then I, I knew this was a, an animal that wasn't supposed to be alive anymore. But we got one more chance. I always said, you know, that strike one is that we farmed up a bunch of the habitat that ferrets needed and prairie dogs needed, and strike two was that we poisoned tens of millions of acres and reduced their habitat that way. And then strike three, which was almost an out, was this old world disease, sylvatic plague, that impacted both ferrets and prairie dogs. But we it was only a foul tip. We had another chance, and we were able to salvage some of those animals from that last population, capture breed them, and provide reintroduction with of this species across the West. One of the key points to establishing recovery for black-footed ferrets in northern Colorado and actually range-wide was the, the opportunity to set up a, a facility such as what we have here uh, north of Fort Collins, the Ferret Recovery Center. The issue is, is that you can breed ferrets in just about any facility that you would like, but the key to this operation is that the ferrets then have an opportunity to become uh, one with their environment before they are actually turned out in the wild. The work that goes on at the National Blackfoot Ferret Conservation Center involves pairing animals so that they can have babies. It involves taking care of those babies when they're born. It involves fairly common diseases that can affect them during their younger lives. But there's some more exotic diseases that affect them in the wild that we have to prepare them for before their release. And we've been successful with captive breeding. We've been successful with reintroduction efforts. But the long-term sustainability of those efforts is gonna require continued management. And the real challenge for us is do we have the will to continue to assist this species over the long term to make sure it stays on the landscape. It, I, there's a whole saying out there, and it usually refers to children, but it says it takes a village to raise children. But I think in this case, it also takes a village to, to raise ferrets. And the village also includes the city of Fort Collins and the local government here, and um, all the efforts they've done by putting the live ferret display at the Fort Collins Museum of Discovery to um, doing environmental education and outreach to schools and classrooms to actually contributing to ferret recovery by offering up some sites for us to release ferrets on, which is incredible, because it's not an easy task. Bringing black-footed ferrets back to this landscape really posed a challenge to the city of Fort Collins. Never had done something like this before. So one of the things we really needed to develop first was a very purposeful and thoughtful management plan of how we're gonna manage not just ferrets, but also black-tailed prey dogs in this landscape. We wanted to make sure that we, we maintained a recreation use of the landscape. We wanted to maintain kind of the rec ranching um, history on the landscape. We wanted to bring things like bison back to this landscape. And so we needed to be very thoughtful about how many prey dogs and where those colonies would exist. We worked with our grazing association, both Folsom and Natural Fort, to make sure that anything that we did was not going to have a negative impact on them as well. This landscape was part of uh, 
a working ranch and now the, the city has continued on with that with the purchase of it. And they feel that, you know, grazing is part of that working landscape. It, it worked out really well for us to, when we're approached is how can the ranching community and the reintroduction of the black-footed ferret work hand in hand. And so um, about five years ago, it, it was a logical choice for us to work together on this reintroduction process. One of the things that strikes me about this whole program is uh, all the people were working together and, and having a, a same goal. And, and yes, the goal is for the ferrets, but it ties in with, with, with the in, environment uh, also and with the health of the prairie dog because they're also doing work with trying to control plague and prairie dogs because of the diet of the ferrets. So it has, a, it, I think it's more of an impact of the whole ecosystem instead of asking the question about one animal. We can buy and protect lands um, at landscape scale um, and utilize them both for public enjoyment, recreation, support the ranching activities that occur up here, uh, bring species back to the landscape that are missing, and do that in a way while still being a very transparent and open to public use. If it wasn't for the people of Fort Collins, we wouldn't be here supporting the work that we do. That's what we're very fortunate that way. I think ranchers are the first, um, the first conservationists, if you will, because we take care of of the land, we take care of the livestock, we take care of the wildlife. It, it just goes hand in hand. Sometimes we get questions from folks, you know, why do we have to save everything? And I don't know that we can. Why? Because it is indeed all interconnected. The loss of one, one particular species, even though it seems to be a very, very small portion will indeed impact the entire ecosystem. My son who's 13, he's growing up learning and listening to me talk about my work and the job and the wildlife that I'm helping to manage. And, and I think he's really proud that his mom is doing something that's helping save an endangered species. There's no other city in the Western United States where we're trying to recover the endangered black-footed ferret that's done as much for the recovery of this species as the city of Fort Collins. When Folks look back and ask themselves, why do we still have a black-footed ferret in future generations? Fort Collins is going to get part of the credit. It really is about community. It's about people coming together to save a species from extinction. The saying, think globally, act locally, rings true in the ferret story. Remember, when we save a species, we are saving a part of ourselves. Thank you.